Hey there, how's it going? I'm doing this challenge again for two reasons. One, I wanted to see if there would be a difference in how much I could get done if I didn't need to worry about the art. And second, and most important, I just found it to be a lot of fun and I wanted to do it again. If you haven't seen my first video trying this challenge, there's a card up top if you want to see how it went using an asset pack. After doing that challenge, I was just really wondering how I would fare without the limitation of pre-made art. Or any pre-made asset for that matter. In reality, I was a bit bummed out with my first game. It functioned. Kinda. And I wanted to see if I could take what I learned to make something I'm a bit happier with. So, deja vu. It's the next night, and Eleven approaches. This time, I'm removing all handicaps and restrictions except for the one hour time limit. So let's see how it goes. As usual, I begin by creating the player sprite. And since this lovely orange box is going to be my player art, I'm also able to quickly add in a solid object that I can use for the ground and walls. Then, adding the platform behavior to the player and tweaking a few settings, I have the player moving and jumping. Because the camera ate up so much time in the last challenge, I decided that this game would consist of single screen levels and the ability to screen wrap. I'm a big fan of screen wrapping in games. And over the last year or so, I've tried several different ways to set it up. For me, what I found works the best is to create an object that represents your screen. I give it the scroll to behavior so the camera always centers itself on its origin point. Then I set it to the viewport size, in this case 854 by 480. Then we just have to compare the player's X and Y against the screen object's X and Y. Then we need to make sure that we add the screen object's width or height and divide it by 2 to get a correct comparison of its origin point in the center. If the player is too far to one side, it will be repositioned to the other. For me so far, this is the simplest way I've found to do screen wrapping. Alright, we're 10 minutes in and I'm feeling good. I pull from the same idea as last time, and I start to add pickups that the player will need to collect to open the exit. But unlike last time, instead of picking up one object, there'll be several. To keep track of it all, I also create a level manager object, which is entirely used to store level-specific instance variables. Things like the current level number of the layout, the total number of pickups on the level, and how many of those pickups the player has collected so far. Now with the player able to grab the pickups, I need to add a level exit or there's going to be no way to progress. It was around now that I could really see how much slower this process was when adding in the art. I'm not even 20 minutes in and the core mechanics are already there. Of course, making considered choices like not having a fancy camera and not having to add animations makes a huge difference. So I'm going to stop directly comparing the two projects now because at this point the differences are too great. But I do want to keep in mind that any success I have in this game is because of what I learned from the first game. Instead of having the exit be visible at all times, I thought it would look cool to have it appear when the last pickup is collected. I want to add some sort of screen transition after the player reaches the door. So I set about disabling the platform behavior when the player overlaps the door. This caused the player to kind of just awkwardly sit in space on the side. So I made it when the player reaches the goal, they are set to the center, which looks a lot better in my opinion. Under 30 minutes in and it's time for some level design. While laying out the levels, I had to be careful to make sure that all sides lined up correctly. Otherwise, the player could end up screen wrapping into a wall. My thought while laying these out was that the goal of the game would be to see how fast you could get through all the levels. I was planning to have a timer to keep track of how long it took you to make it through the whole game, but in the end, I just didn't have the time to put it in. I added an infinite fall level because seriously, who doesn't love this? I love it so much I also made it the windscreen too. And for no reason other than it sounded funny to me, I made it so that the player doesn't follow the instructions and hit enter on the final screen, but instead chooses to collect all the extra pickups and go in the final door, well, we'll see. Here's where this gets sad for me because I have to admit to a behind the scenes screw up. So I use OBS to record my screen. And a while back, I had the number pad multiply key set up as the start and stop record hotkey. I honestly haven't used this in forever and completely forgot that it was set up that way. Without realizing the consequences of my actions, I pulled up my calculator and multiplied two numbers together. You guessed it, my footage stops here sadly. This is me realizing it about six minutes after the challenge ended and I went to check the footage. So I don't know what happened. I thought recording was still going. It is now six minutes past. I did a recording of, well, just the playthrough, and I just went and checked the footage, and apparently it stopped recording about 10 minutes short, is what it looked like. Uh, it stopped recording 20 minutes short, of course. So, that sucks. I lost some of the footage there, but I'll show off the game now that's... That's really unfortunate. I'm going to jump back in and take over for the real-time footage because the audio quality is terrible. Luckily, in the part that I didn't get recorded, I really didn't do anything crazy. I just polished up the game a little bit to make it feel good. I think the only extra content that I added was an extra menu and the secret level you haven't seen yet. I added a constant rotation to the pickups and door to give them some visual interest. I definitely think this looks better than squares just sitting on the screen. I created a particle object that is created when the player collects an item. 
This just gives an extra little bit of fanfare and feeling to collecting the pickups. And my favorite effect, which ended up being so simple to put in. When the player reaches the goal and its position is set to the center of the door, I then tween the size of the door to be super large. With the door above all other screen elements other than the player, I added in a slight delay before moving to the next layout, and it makes for a really great screen transition. I was able to add a menu, but it's just a layout with a button on it that takes you to the first screen. I couldn't even take the time to figure out a name for the game and type it in above the button. But I got a menu in there and it makes me feel like I achieved something. The last thing I spent some time on was the final, final level. If you don't follow the on-screen instructions and press enter, but instead collect all the pickups, which there are 39 of them, and go to the door, you get taken to a secret level which contains... Well, I guess you'll just have to play it and see. I'm just kidding, it takes you to a soft lock room because I have a really sick sense of humor. In the end, I'm really happy with this little game. There's a bunch that I would love to add to the game, of course, but as a core couple minute experience, this game came out great and I'm really pleased with it. These super short design sprints are just something I find really enjoyable to do, and I have a lot of fun with them. Over the last week or so, I've begun streaming on Twitch, and we've done a couple of these challenges live, which were a lot of fun. We did another one hour challenge, as well as a three hour challenge using an asset pack. I've been having an amazing time chatting and making games with everyone. I'd like to say an extra special thank you to my video producer Patreons. During these crazy times, I very much appreciate your support. You are all awesome and it means a lot. If you want your name here and the ability to see videos before anyone else, the link is in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you are healthy and safe wherever you are. If you'd like to catch one of these challenges live, join me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash vimlark. I won't be doing them every time I stream, but I'll probably do them at least once a week. If you would like to get in contact with me, you can leave a comment below, message me on Twitter, or better yet, join me and a bunch of other cool people on the Discord. If you enjoyed this, please consider liking and subscribing. This game is up on my challenge itch page. The link to it, all my other games, and everything else I've been talking about is down in the description below. Once again, thank you for spending some time with me. I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.